I'm back on the Volvo again. Again, literally, I will do the other cars soon, but yeah, there's lots to do on this one at the moment to keep it on the road. Uh, I'm done with welding for the moment. I'm really, really fed up with welding. Believe me, I've had enough of it. Um, I've seam sealed everywhere I've welded. I've got some of this comma underbody seal, which got some really good reviews online. So I'm gonna blast that over later. I won't do it on camera, it's just squirting paint. Uh, at a later date, I might come back and redo a couple of the bits I'm not really happy with, but they're solid and they're waterproof and that's kind of what counts. Um, but today I've got stuff to do that's going to make the car better, not just less full of holes. I've got brake discs, I've got brake pads, I've got some bushes to go onto the drop links just there. And I've got some paint, which I've misplaced for the moment, to do these wheels, because they look skanky as anything. And waiting for me right now at Quickfoot are a brand new pair of Uniroyal 185714s to go on the front of the car, where they're going to do the tracking as well, because the reason in these front tires, apart from the fact these are brands I've never heard of and are starting to be old enough that they're cracking on the sidewall, the passenger side one, the tracking is so far out that it's kind of going down to the, well, it's going through the tread very fast on the outside edge. So new tires on the front. Once it's been MOT'd next month, and I'm happy that there's no other major disasters waiting to rear the head massively expensively, I will stump up and get a pair of rear tires as well, because those are also ditch finding Chinese rubbish. But before the new tires come, I'm gonna paint these wheels, and because I want the paint to be dry when I put the wheel back on, I'm gonna do that bit first. If only I could remember what I did with the cans of paint. Oh good, more noisy stuff. Everyone's gonna love me, as usual. If I was going to go all Ed China on you and offer you yet another top tip, a really good way of masking your tyre if you're painting a wheel is to use a pack of playing cards because then what you can do is just pop them in the rim around there and it protects the tyre really nice and you can reuse it over and over again and you can still use the cards afterwards but I'm not going to waste a pack of cards today because I'm going to bin these tyres tomorrow so I'm not going to bother masking them. So that does look a bit meh at the moment, but don't worry because there's gonna have a pair of brand new tires on that in next to no time. And then it'll suddenly look very nice indeed, especially with the hubcaps on. So you won't really see it anyway. A bit pointless really. Now as always when doing stuff with brakes and putting the uh, calipers back in with the, I'll do it in a second, you always just loosen off the cap a little bit and then put some old paper around it or tissue, rags, whatever. So if it does rise up too high, it doesn't pour down the side of the engine bay. Now, I've never taken one of these brake systems apart before, but I've done a fair few calipers over the years, so how hard can it be? Which is undoing, which is do up. I actually did buy some new trousers and sweatshirts for working under the car, because I thought I was looking unbelievably scruffy uh, doing this kind of thing. And now I'm thinking, oh, these shirts are too nice to get dirty under the car. <laughs> I say buy new, they're like the cheapest ones that Sports Direct had. Well, that came out pretty easy. Could do a bit of grease on it because it's bone dry. You can tell I've been grinding around this poor old jack because it's covered in bits of grot. I'm going to give it a good clean later because it looks rather sad and sorry for itself. As well as the jack here, there is an axle stand under the chassis rail as well. So this car is very well supported. Ha. So I've been trying to undo this thing and I literally didn't need to. It swings up on this top. I need to change that. Oh, I had to repair that somehow. Um, so I've now got Wow, some really, really rusty looking um, brake pads. I mean, that is way past its best, as is our latter one. So it's been rusting into the pads. Let's rust this up on the suspension so it doesn't hang on the, um, on the pipes. Interestingly, this is a, a Bendix system. It's got dual piston calipers, and each piston has got its own pipe. So I guess it's a fail-safe system. So now we want to be getting the caliper carrier off. Yeah, 8mm Allen key to, to caliper things. The best thing about these new trousers is they've got pockets on the knees for like a big padded thing. They're only £6 for a pair of knee pads. So for £20, I've got comfort out here in the driveway. It's so nice. This is a luxury. I'm not in so much pain as before. That's a thumping old thing. This will not turn at all. I've tried whacking it with a hammer. I've tried kicking it. I've tried shouting at it. Nothing's gonna work. It's time to break out my old friend, the heat induction tool. As you all know, this is my favorite tool in the world and I'm always secretly a little bit quite happy to have to break it out because something's stuck. Oh no, I've got to get the induction tool out. What a shame. 
Tee hee hee. Right, let's see if I can get this lined up. Yep, yeah, okay. Actually, this dear, it's a bit larger one to be honest. You can bend these tools to make them more appropriate to your application. And you don't actually touch, you just put it just a couple of millimeters away, so give this a whirl. As before, when I was doing it on the rover, it's a couple of seconds on, a couple of seconds off. And that gets very hot very fast, breaking the corrosion and rust that's bonding it into the, the hub carrier. Instant heat. Well, not really heat, it's, I don't know what it is. Something clever and magic. Instant magic. Right. Now it's good and hot, let's see if we can break it off. Oh yeah, instantly undone. Not even a struggle. Oh, that's quite a stiff thing actually. Come on, undo your so-and-so, oh dear me. There we go, it's out, finally, free. Dear me, a bit of rust in those threads and that's really warm still. Now, carrier, you can come off, I'll clean this up as well once it's, um, <sighs> when it probably goes back, I'll give this all clean up and some fresh grease. Now, how do you undo? Normally, somewhere around here on the front of a brake disc, there's a little screw that you can undo to remove it, but there doesn't appear to be one today. Let's look at my new ones. These are too big. Oh, I don't believe it, this is the wrong size. Uh, after all that. That's, that's not gonna work. Damn. This is a 26 centimeter, and this is 28 centimeters. That's too big. Damn. I feel a phone call coming on. Damn, and damn again. Well, that's kind of annoying. There are two sizes of disc and pad, and this is a smaller one, unfortunately, uh, which means I've got to wait until tomorrow to actually carry on. So I'll have to put these ones back now. So I'll have to kind of reassemble it so I can park it back on the ground again tonight. Now to reassemble it, what you need to do, use an old pad to kind of spread the load between the two pistons, get a G-clamp and squeeze the two things together. Um, if I was working in a workshop, I would leave this all up on its stands, but as it's out in the drive, I don't want someone nicking my axle stands overnight, so I'm going to have to put it all back down again on the floor. I need some bigger G-clamps. This one is only just big enough to get in there. You don't, wind it, you don't need to wind it too far back, just enough to get over the lip of the... Uh, the brake disc, if you're using old pads back in again, for some reason. If you're using new pads, obviously you've got to go a fair way back because the new pads are going to be quite a bit thicker than the old ones you've taken out. It's worth just glancing up and making sure no fluid is squirting over the top. There we go. And that should allow us to rebuild these for the night. Isn't that annoying? Gotta line that up. So that one's got the marks of the pistons on it, so that can go back that side. It just slides into the side of the carrier. This one likewise. I'm not gonna worry about doing too much to it because it's just gonna sit here overnight, waiting for the new pads to arrive. This goes back in. 12 mil socket on there. nice and quick and easy. There's a bit of flaked off under seal, so I'm just gonna go clean it up. And I'll give that a shot of under seal in a minute. Well, it's tomorrow, and... That's not white wall tires. That's the mad overspray from the silver and white paint. Well, good news, bad news. Good news, number one, Euro car parts. Got a set of uh, 
different sized brake discs and pads in for me, which I'm rather hoping are going to be the right ones for this car, because there's only two options that it could be, and it's the other one now, so really, it kind of has to be. Other good news, it tipped down yet again for several nights running, and the inside of the front of the car is bone dry, so it looks like it's no longer leaking in the front. I think that um, patching up those holes has done the trick, and the car is now no longer soluble in the front half. Anyway, bad news. Bad news number one, behind the driver's seat, it's still wet, so the water is still coming in from the back. I suspect it might be the rear windscreen seal because the rear windscreen itself is delaminating a bit, so I think that might be it. Uh, bad news number two, uh, while I was putting all this back together last yesterday, I was absentmindedly picking up a bit of surface rust and flaky under seal, and guess what? I went straight through to the washer bottle, so I need to plate in here as well. More welding! Oh, bad news number three, um, I ran out of welding wire. I was just tidying up on the other side chassis rail, just giving it a bit more of a blast on the outside to make it look a bit neater, and ran out of a welding wire, so I need to get more welding wire. Oh, good. Now, there aren't that many tools to use in this particular job, so hopefully I'll better rattle through them fairly quickly. First off, I need a 12 mil socket. Again. Where's my 12 mil gone? 12, there we go, finally. Didn't think I did this up that tight. Hey, there we go. Pads come out. This slides off its little pin. You may remember this from yesterday, or two minutes ago if you're watching some video time. I'm working fast because I've only got 45 minutes before I've got to go pick up my son from school. <laughs> Which means I've got to do this rapido. Right, so yeah, and I did a 10 mil spanner to undo that little pin there. So this little pin here actually came undone surprisingly easily. Wow, and then the disc just falls off. That I was expecting a fight with, because the instructions on how to do this generally mention hitting it quite hard with a hammer. Ta-da! More for the scrap pile. Second time lucky, these discs are actually the right size, just much less rusty. And can you see how much thinner that rear um, disc of the two, of this old one, is half the width virtually of the new one. And that's the bit you can see that's not worn down. Right, let's get these on the car rapidly. Just wanna give, give these a quick wipe down with some degreaser, just to make sure that all the transit oil and grease to stop it rusting in the bag is off there. I'll be honest though, this doesn't feel like it's got any on it, because it feels, well it's in a plastic bag for a start, and it feels like there's nothing on there at all. Right, let's get that on there. Easy peasy. This is going too well. Let's use a ratchet spanner, that's much easier. Doesn't need to be too tight. Beautiful, job done. A new disc is on. That took all of 30 seconds. I like it when stuff goes that way. Right, let's get the carrier back on first of all. This isn't a how-to guide, but the two bolts go through here and here, and then you hang the caliper off this greased little rod here. Now we've got the new pads as well. Whoops, I'm making holes in my um, gloves with the little retaining clip things. Now do these look the same? They certainly look a lot thicker. These are a long way from being worn out. They've still got like, four or five millimeters of uh, of brake material on there. I'm just not happy with old, old brakes, really. And that's, that's the difference. It's quite significant. Now, this is kind of weird when you put these on. Third time not lucky. These are still the wrong, wrong pads. Okay, that's uh, significantly not helpful. I did wonder if maybe there was some leeway for error, but if you look at the two of these, this has got these little kind of ears on the back of it. 
and also it's got quite a significant more curve to it as well. So um, I need to make a third trip to Euro car parts. Oh, oh dear me. Bother, as they say. Actually, no, I've got, to, oh, I've got this booked in for tires tomorrow, so I've got to go and put this on. I need to put the pads back in. Well, yay go me. I didn't film it because I thought it'd be boring to watch the same thing twice. I just managed to get this wheel off, use the heat induction tool on the same top bolt as before, change that brake disc over, put the old pads back in again in under 12 minutes, which is pretty good going for someone on their own with seized nuts and bolts on an ancient car. Now I'm just gonna do it all again tomorrow when I get the right size pads for the third time. I'm here in Quickfit in Maidstone where there's a nice pair of brand new Unoil Range Sport 3s going on the behind of the Volvo which is going to make a massive difference. These are great tyres for handling in poor weather which is ideal for the kind of conditions we seem to be having constantly at the moment. And really good for this car because it's more boat than car anyway. I've got a set of these on the Rover Tomcat, I think it's a slightly earlier version, and they've been really good for the last well, nearly 10 years I think I've had them on there. Pretty due for a change just due to their age. But they've had amazing grip in pretty much all conditions. So they're booming, as you've seen in their car. That's something ideal for this. But well, weirdly, this is the tyre that was going bald on the edge, and that's apparently correct. And this is the other front tyre, which was absolutely fine, which is slightly out, which they're going to correct. Well, the boot floor looks pretty decent, because we're worried about that. This doesn't look too bad either up here. All behind the exhaust. These rear footwells, which are for the water, are thankfully pretty good. And we are done. We've got tracking, we've got tyres, nearly got brakes. This car is fantastically sorted, kind of-ish. Um, when I get home, I will put the new brake pads, which are now on the passenger seat, onto the car, and then it'll be done. Well, not done. It'll be done for this video anyway. There'll be more for the next time. Lots more. So, my first drive on the new tyres and nearly all their new brakes. Um, it's got the new discs on there. Uh, new pads are here, third time lucky. By the time you watch this, if they're the right ones, I will have fitted this, but I don't want to subject you to having to watch me fit brake pads three times in the same video. I think you might get bored doing that. But the front discs already have a bit more bite to them, so that's a, a good thing. But the way that the car has improved thanks to the new tyres is immense. I mean, it's got the tracking is sorted, the balance is sorted, and the grip is just immense compared to the terrible old Chinese ditch finders. When I reverse it on a hard lock, the car no longer feels like it's scrubbing and pulling the wheel sideways. It actually feels like it's turning as it should be. At 50 miles an hour on the dual carriageway, the car was so much more stable on the way home. It wasn't juddering over the place and shaking the wheel in my hand. It was actually a solid 50. No, no problem at all. It was lovely. It just feels like there's so much more grip from these Uniroyals. I mean, you hit a corner now or a roundabout and you're not bracing for the fact it's gonna understeer or slide. You just know it's gonna dig in and grip. And it'll still lean like a ship that's taken on water, but you will go around the corner just perfectly. It's just, it's just so much more rewarding to drive now. It's a huge difference for just a small thing.
It was also great to get underneath the car and see it properly on the ramp at Quick Fit, and so I could see the rest of the chassis was in actually really good condition. It's just those little areas under the front footwells. I might redo that one in that corner because I'm not really happy with the way that looks from underneath. Now I've had a really good look at it. But other than that, I'm fairly satisfied with the state of it. Now I've spent a bit of money on this particular video. Uh, I think, what did I spend? 75 pounds on discs and pads. And thanks to a really good deal I get through a, a work arrangement, uh, it's about 60 quid for the front tires, including fitting. So that's another, whoops, that's another 135 pounds, which puts the car up to what? 310 quid. So we're still under the 500 pound mark. I admit I am slightly losing sight of the fact I bought this for a sub 500 pound challenge. And the more I get into the car, the more I'm thinking, I just want a very nice Volvo and I'm kind of forgetting about the limit. Because let's face it, I'm not going to win the economy. I'm not going to win the speed. I might as well win it having a cool car. And I might also lose at selling it. I haven't really sort of rationaled myself to the fact that I've got to sell it. It's in my mind, it's still a bit of a keeper. It's a nice car. It's nice to keep. There's still plenty to do though. Some of it will be free in my own handiwork, some will cost a bit of money. Uh, headlining will mostly be materials and time. Cleaning I'm looking forward to still. Maybe that'll be the next video on this car. Something to look forward to. Well, thank you for joining me and sort of chucking all your support in the comments for this thing. I've really appreciated it and a lot of the tips and advice people have given as well have been really handy. If you've joined Patreon supporting the channel since this car came on, thank you again as well. I really do appreciate everyone who's, who's jumped in with that. That really does help keep the channel going and uh, you know, make stuff happen on it so thank you very much indeed if you haven't hit like and subscribe already then please do it makes a huge difference as far as YouTube is concerned and makes a big difference to the channel so please the subscribe button is down there so is the like button and also the bell notification so if you want to hit that as well you'll find out when the next installment happens thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time when who knows what will be happening